Hello and welcome to coverage of the Magic Online Championship. We're in Seattle, Washington. I'm Marcia Seckliff in the booth. I've got Kenji Egashira sitting next to me, and we are very pleased to bring you one of the last few rounds of Standard before we cut the top four here of the tournament. We've got Antonio Del Morale on the Pro Tour champion facing off against our current reigning Magic Online Championship champion, Lars Dom, both at six and five. Now that doesn't look like a very good record if you're used to watching GPs or you know bigger tournaments, but actually they are in striking distance of top four, but they got to do a lot of winning to get there. And uh, this match could prove an elimination match p potentially here. So let's see what we've got. On the bottom part of your screen, you're going to see Antonio. Now he's playing Obzon. I'm going to call it control. I agreed. Yeah. And on the top part, we've got Lars Dom who is playing a Bant. Megamorph deck. It looks like he's just taking a mulligan here. Uh, he didn't have any white sources in the opening hand, so the hand was a little bit awkward. This one definitely rates good enough to keep, but it's going to be... Yeah, this is a very slow hand on the yeah. on the draw, though. Especially when Antonio has that thought seize. Yeah, this is going to be... This could be a rough one here. Antonio can take away the Courser of Crew Fix, and, you know, you got to figure that if Lars's first play of the game... Is a, is a death miss raptor. That's going to favor Antonio in a pretty big way here Certainly. as he really would like this game to go long. That That's his his primary concern. Now, Thoughtseize hitting a death miss raptor isn't something you see <laughs> very often, so Courser seems to be his only choice here. I would definitely take the Courser as well. Feels and another land off the top there for Lars. Also interesting, none of them are scry lands here, so he doesn't even get to kind of, you know, churn through and try to find some action. He's stuck just playing some fetches and cracking those. Yeah, the thinning is pretty negligible. You'd much rather have that scry. Totally. Now, this gets interesting as well because even though we're calling Antonio's deck more on the control end of the spectrum, by the way, there's a scry land. He does have fleece main lines, which are very good against some of the aggressive decks. But in this case, that thing is going to do a good chunk of damage and eventually maybe even trade for, for, the, uh, for the Raptor there. It in the meantime, things look to be... Proceeding quite nicely for for Mor uh, Del Morale on here. He's going to play a second Fleece Main Lion and then a Temple of Malady, and all of a sudden he's got six power on the battlefield. Yeah, here. looking at Lars' deck list, he doesn't have a good way or any way to deal with a uh, monstrous Fleece Main. All right, and that might be the route here that we see from uh, from Antonio as well, because oh, he played it face down. Interesting. That means that he gets to crunch here for a ton of damage, but one of them. Wow, and there's Corsair a crew fix too. Yeah, th this is this is going to get ugly here. Lars Dom is already down to nine life. The face down death miss raptor not blocking. <laughs> not sure. I probably would have faced up uh, one of my death miss raptors he, he's there. He's trading a ton of damage. Yeah, I just I think he's way too far behind and a little bit too flooded to to really make that kind of play. All right, we're this this Obzon Charm is the card that's on top of Antonio's library. You can see that, of course, because of the Courser. So what's the best draw here for Lars? Probably, I guess, maybe Whisperwood Elemental next turn just to give him multiple blockers. But he knows that uh, Antonio's drawing that Abzan Charm. That's right, yeah, that would take care of that. In the meantime, two face-down morphs now for Lars. They're both the same creature, but uh, no profitable blocks here as it sits. And that's going to do it. Lars Dom just scoops, scoops him up. up. Wow. Antonio with the beatdown. Now, remember, his deck, we're calling it obs on control. But, you know, you don't want to put too much emphasis on whether it's a mid-range or a control deck. They, they play so similarly. It's just a more a matter of at what point are you planning on taking the game and how do you end up winning it. We're calling it that way because Antonio, he, he's got three Elspeth Sons champion in the main and even a Crux of Fate. So, you know, that kind of deck tends to skew towards the, the, the later game, which would mean you'd rather kind of stay alive for a while and then hammer with one of your big finishers. But it also, you know, we're still playing four Fleece Main Lion, four Siege Rhino, four Den, er, four Den, er, three Den Protector, excuse me, and four Corsair Crucifix, and even ends of the foremost. So this deck certainly has aggressive draws at its disposal. Yeah, that's the nice thing about these type of decks. If you have the right draw, you know, you can still just play out your creatures, and they're so good early or late. Siege Rhino, I'll draw them all day. Yeah. I yeah, how many of those do I get? Yeah. <laughs> well, seems like eight in every standard deck yeah, currently. Turns like, yeah, it turns, turns out four is the number and uh so i'm liking this uh i see a hornet nest in lars's sideboard oh yeah that's nice 
don't There's think he's bringing it in though. It looks like it's he's leaving it there. But it definitely seems cute. I guess against the red deck. Yeah, you can bring that in against green red. You can also bring it in against mono red. It can do pretty serious work there. Now Antonio's bringing in his Ugin. So for some more top end game. I don't know how good against the uh well the morph the mega morph strategy that is gonna be, but Ugin's pretty nice against those. I suppose. Yeah, it really is. Like if you know if you if you can set it up so that your opponent has a couple of Death Mist Raptors face up when you cast Ugin, you can just sure, get them sure. out of there. If 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 you set it up so that they've just got the one morph left, you can just zap it. Yeah, but Lars has mastery of the unseen, so either mm. you know he has to minus Ugin to get rid of the mastery or sure. you know. Yeah, there's never a there's never a perfect answer, but uh yeah, I think Ugin will be positioned pretty nicely here if he can get to that point in the game. And he should be able to. I mean, the one thing about the Bant Megamorph deck is that it is not particularly quick. Mm -mm. Alrighty. Looks like Lars... Mul no, no. no, no. It, it'll, it'll jump over. It's... There we go. Uh-huh. So Antonio kept a really slow hand here. But does he have Thoughtseize on the play, on the draw? No, and that means that Mastery of the Unseen gets to hit the battlefield, but we can see that there's already a Dromica's Command in hand here for Antonio, so he's going to have an answer to that whenever to he with wants the pesky it. Enchantment, yeah. Yeah, and, and it looks like, eh, it depends on what he wants to do, but Dragonlord Ojitai would be a fine thing to take with Thoughtseize, otherwise his other option is Valorous Stance. Stance. Yeah, <laughs> Valorous Stance doesn't do much here. Uh, no, it doesn't really do anything, does it? Nope, not yeah. at all. So I think we're going to see Dragonlord Ojitai hit the bin here. Luckily for Lars, the uh, uh, you know what? He he might be considering taking the Death Mist. Why is that? Just because uh, Lars' hand is so slow. He doesn't even mm -hmm. have the mana to cast the Ojitai, and the Death Mist Raptor is the only thing going for him besides the uh, Mastery. That which is he can true. already deal with the command in hand. That is true, and also Antonio has Elspeth, which can take care of Dragonlord Correct, Ojitai. Yeah. So yeah, you might be right. It would seem crazy to Lars, <laughs> just because he's already got Master of the Unseen. I think it would tip him off that, yeah, you yeah, know, well, certainly. that thing's not long <laughs> for this world. But but it is, in fact, Dragonlord Ojitai that hits the bin here. The draw, another Death Mist Raptor. Yeah, let's see if he casts it face up this time. I think there Antonio we go. just wants to draw lands. He's happy. Yes, lands for the rest would be fine. This is going to be a Den Protector. Yep, he can rebuy the Thoughtseize. Also, if he manages to draw like a fetch land, he can rebuy that. Exactly. So if I'm Lars here, I think, I think I might just play out the other Death Mist, honestly, instead of using the Mastery. Yeah, that's always the decision. You know, there's certain decks that you want to just start activating Mastery as soon as possible. I tend to lean that direction whenever I have it in play, especially against a more controlling deck. Uh, you know, I, I find that if you just manage to get your value out of it while, you know, kind of make hay while the sun's shining, you know, because those things aren't always long for this world. And uh, if you can get some value out of it before it goes away, it can be really good. You build up a bunch of cards in your hand and gives you a great backup plan. Exactly. But I don't think he's going for it. I, I, I think he'd rather cast the uh, Death Mist Raptor face down here. Oh, he drew a fetch land. Oh, there's there's he, your value. He didn't actually play it, though. Didn't even look like he considered. He just snap played his other basic. Yeah, I think he had it lined up already that he wanted to use Dromica's command here before Lars does start activating. Yeah. And look at this yeah. play. Huge. Wow. That Casu is nasty. Casual two for ones. Yeah, he plays Fleece Mane first and then Dromica's command to fight and get rid of the Mastery of the Unseen. And a little late there, Corsair Crucifix could have taken that hit if he had drawn it last turn. It is an enchantment. Yeah, but unfortunately, uh, he didn't have it, and so Master of the Unseen is now gone. Take a look at what uh, Lars has going on in his graveyard. That's the Dragonlord Ojitai that got Thoughtseize. That's a Death Mist Raptor that just got fought, and there's Master of the Unseen, so not a whole lot going on right now, but it is something we need to keep an eye on. Absolutely, and he, he does have his own four copies of Den Protector. That, so. That's what I was saying, yeah. That would right. certainly be a nice draw for him here. That's the top card of Lars Dom's library. As he kind of transitions into grind mode here, and he does so pretty nicely as well. I'll say 
He's going to have two coarser crew fix and uh, Valorous stance. You know, that can take out certain threats, you know, a Siege Rhino or something along those lines. So he's not in a bad position right now. No, not at all. And he's going to keep getting value off his Courser. Even if he doesn't have a land on top after he draws this next Courser, he can play the Flood to Strand you know, see what he's going to draw and then shuffle it away if he doesn't like it. That's right. Now, switching gears over to Antonio's side, he's also not in bad shape. He can take a hit from Death Miss Raptor, fall down to 12 here, play a land, and he'll have Monstrous Fleece Mane mm -hmm. active here. And uh, that's just going to hold down the ground for him for a long time. He's going to be able to play Elspeth once he finds an untapped land. And then he still has that Den Protector face down. Oh, we found Crux of Fate. Crux of Fate. Well, Crux with uh, the line isn't too bad. Yeah. Yeah, that's a nice it's sequence. A thing, if he doesn't right? find a I land, mean. he can monstrous the line. He can get value out of his morph, and then he can move over. That's a little awkward. Hello, Stratus Dancer. So Stratus Dancer, though, is on top of Lars Dom's library, and, of course, Antonio can see that as well. <laughs> so uh, that will pinch the Crux of Fate timing a Correct. little bit for him, perhaps. Also... Um, Antonio did thought seize and see the Valorous stance, so as long as he's holding up a white and a, a colorless, he can you know make one of his creatures indestructible. If uh, Antonio does go for the Crux, oh, I'm sorry, Lars can make one of his creatures indestructible. That's true. Is that also? Let's see. No, it doesn't work well against the Fleece Main here. So right now, I would expect Antonio to either monstrous or use his or flip up the morph. Those are the only two options he has currently into turn here. That's right. He'd still like to draw a land with the double Elspeth in hand. Get one of them on the table as soon as you can. All right, there's the monstrous ability from Fleece Mane, and he finds oh, Thought Seize. Thought Seize is not a bad draw. If he decides to Thought Seize his turn, he can take away Valorous Stance, but it would close the window on Crux of Fate as Stratus Dancer would hit exactly. the hand for Lars. He could cast it face down and have the mana to counter. So, so Antonio should know that uh, he has the stance here. He fires off the Thoughtseize. Yeah, he does. All right. He's going to save Crux of Fate for later. It seemed like a reasonable place to Crux. You would put a, a second Death Miss Raptor into the graveyard here. But I think you can live with that if you know that your opponent doesn't have anything relevant in hand, and, and Antonio knew that. Well, no, maybe that's not good, because if he Cruxes, we know Lars is drawing the Stratus Dancer, getting back all those Raptors just resets his board completely. Oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah. So Crux is actually looking not that great yeah. either way. Basically, he just Antonio wants to just hit the land and get Elspeth out as soon as he can. Right. Elspeth tokens don't mind jumping in front of little raptors. Man, Stratus Dance are doing serious work here, by the way. And we see Lars, you know, with the Den Protector now on top of his library. Oh, the value train is flowing now for Lars Dom. And unless Antonio hits his land here, he's going to be looking in a world of hurt. So here's Den Protector. I would assume he's going to get his windswept heath back. Yeah, let's see. No, he actually got back Dromica's command here. Okay, so he can fight with something and make uh, Lars sack one of the coursers. Yep, so this is a, a, a well-timed play as well. But remember, he has Stratus Dancer. He has Stratus Dancer, so that's just going to get flipped up anyway. He's going to get that thing back. I don't know. If, I don't know if that was the correct play. I mean, he does M get to maybe kill he had it. to bait out the the Stratus Dancer for the Crux, right? That is probably what he's doing. He's just trying to force Lars to flip up the Stratus Dancer, which he really does there. Yeah, and this is the end of Lars's turn still, so that's actually a good setup. Yeah, that and now, ooh, and there's a land too, so we get to destroy all non-dragon creatures that'll leave the Fleece Main line behind, and Lars Dom on no cards in hand. I like the way that Antonio set this up. He gets a crunch in there for four, and then follow up with Elspeth next turn, and... Uh, that's pretty sweet. That's very sweet. I mean, we do know he's drawing the Den Protector yeah. for some extra value. but Yeah, he will be able to get that back. But now the Elspeth looks to be the dominant card as it can really help shore up the ground game here. And the Fleece Main Lion can even block a Den Protector and keep it from attacking Elspeth. So this, this actually doesn't look too bad at all mm -hmm. for Antonio. He's really going to be leaning hard on the Planeswalker here to finish. But uh, Elspeth usually up to the challenge. Man, Death Respect. Death Miss Raptor is so good. Yeah, that's such a sick card. The worst part for Antonio is that he knew, you know, he was drawing back-to-back -back morph creatures. So, makes the feasibility of uh, 
Jeez. Not, not so good. Yeah. Mastery of the Unseen. That's what he got back with Den Protector, so... Why not? You know what? I kind of like the way that that swung back for Lars Dom there, Elspeth or not. One creature turns into three plus. All right, so what do you like here? Elspeth plus friends versus Master of the Unseen plus friends. I got I to go with the Mastery. Plus, he just drew another Den Protector? Yes, he did. <laughs> <laughs> wow. The value train is extremely real. Yeah, you know, one of the things that um, that Lars has in his graveyard here for all the way from the first turn of the game is Dragon Lord Ojitai as well. I don't even know if he wants that anymore. I would almost be tempted to get back the Stratus Dancer again. Look at this. <laughs> Triple <laughs> Elspeth. The hero of our story. Yeah, he's now flooded on Elspeths. I wonder at, at what point you just have to play the other one and get some more tokens. I mean, obviously, he has to go for the ultimate here, but... Th I think that's the play. Go for ultimate. Your opponent can almost effectively outrace you. Not in creature quantity, but you know, I don't know if they can. Why? You don't mind. I mean, once you ultimate Elspeth and play another Elspeth and and make oh, sure. tokens, if, like if he's I able to ultimate, I think you, I think you get ahead. So the manifest off the first mastery was a windswept heath. Okay. Did you know Den Protector is a good card? Aware. Did you know Dragon Lord Ojita is a pretty decent card too? Keenly aware. And you know th that's that's a really nice one there, as well, for Lars Dom because it's going to be able to pressure Elspeth and mean that Elspeth doesn't get to just go ultimate exactly. here. Exactly. Now, if Antonio can find a removal spell here. Well, even if he does. Dromica's Command. That's a good one to take care of the Mastery, but it doesn't deal with Dragon Lord because Lars has that Valorous stance to make it indestructible even when it, you know, is attacking next yeah, turn. Yeah, you're right. So you have to assume here that Antonio's just going to plus Elspeth, wait for Dromoka's Command, uh, you know, targeting Fleece Main and the Dragon Lord once it attacks and make him sacrifice an, an enchantment. Yeah, and that, you know, if, if that was in... A forest in hand for a large down, that play would be absolutely oh, fantastic yeah, here. But as it stands, Dragon Lord Ojitai is going to get to hit Elspeth in that scenario. What more does it need? Hexproof flying? Let's just give it an instructable. Sure. Why not? Yeah. Now, Dromica's command will still force Lars, though, to sacrifice the mastery. mastery. Yeah. So that problem is done. It's it's just Dragon Lord it Ojitai yeah, yeah. and four other, five other creatures. <laughs> Not really seen a the more, the more if we know is the other death mist raptor. Yeah, interestingly, um, if Lars does get desperate. Oh, so he uh, used Elspeth to kill Dragonlord Ojitai. Right, and now he's going to play another Elspeth. And basically find himself in the same spot. I mean, this is the upside to being Elspeth flooded. Yeah, <laughs> I, li I like that play. I mean, this plays around a Stratus Dancer for sure. I didn't necessarily think he was going to do that, but. I like it. I do too. Another fleece main lion for Lars, who's assume perfectly content just continuing to mastery. Antonio didn't have quite enough mana to play Elspeth and Dromica's command that turn. Where's an obelisk of Erd when you need one, Marshall? <laughs> well, there's one incoming. It's called an Elspeth emblem. It takes so many turns. Yeah, only a few more, though. Elspeth is already at five. Just needs to get to seven and then untap, and uh, that'll do it. That's easier, asking a lot. Easier said than done. Um, also, we'll note here that Lars does have the opportunity to attack Elspeth with den protectors yes. and get one of them through to keep that clock down as well. Wow, this is an aggressive attack here. The Fleece Main Line doing a really nice job for Antonio, though. Yeah, it can block one of the Den Protectors, and then the other one's going to get through, but he can trade off a ton of tokens here for much of the board state of Lars. Happy to throw away four uh, more? All of them? Uh, safe. Safe blocks, Do I another guess. one. Yeah. Do another one. There isn't too much that punishes him, and he knows what it is anyways. Now the question is, does Lars want to Valorous Stance? Does he want to just flip up? He does Valorous Stance, so that's going to keep the other Den Protector alive. So this is just a big push to try to get Elspeth in range of death next turn, which this actually does. 
Unfortunately for Lars, <laughs> he doesn't realize that Antonio just has another Elspeth waiting in the wings here. Correct. And Absam Charm, not a bad draw for Antonio. Not at all. That can uh, exile Death Miss Raptor or one of the Den Protectors. I wouldn't be surprised if one of the Den Protectors got Dromica's commanded here. Well, Lars is tapped out. That's right. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah, it does. And in fact, and, and the Master of the Unseen, that was the last activation of that, at least for the time being, until Lars draws another Den Protector or something along those lines. So Temple of Plenty off the top. He's also got a Fleece Main line that he can cast and ultimate, or Monstrous, I should say, in the same turn. Yeah, in the end here, it looks like the Planeswalker proving to be just as powerful, uh, you know, as everybody says they are. Well, the second copy. Uh, or the third, perhaps. And maybe even the third, but yeah, now you're right. Get the main phase uh, fleece main. Antonio didn't opt to uh, Absent Charm the fleece main there in response. No, he's let that thing live. I don't think he cares. Uh, you know, the monstrous fleece main just can't get through a soldier token, of which he's already got nine. I think he's just like, sure. No trample. You know, he would feel pretty silly if, if Lars draws a Dragon Lord Ojitai here <laughs> and, uh, and he didn't have the. Yeah. Ob's on charm in hand, and here we go. Elvish Mystic off the top for Lars Dom. Of course, this is the downside to playing cards like this. They give you explosive starts, but when you draw them here into the late part of the turn uh, of the game, it's uh, pretty miserable. Remember, Antonio is currently up a game in the match over Lars, so if he's able to finish off, he's going to improve his record to 7-5 and five and uh, maybe knock Lars Dom out, dropping him to 6-6. Six and six. Yeah, the, the winner of this match is still going to be in contention here. And I think the loser, I you know, I'm kind of going off a gut feel it's, here. It's close, yeah. The, the math isn't super oh. easy. Is that a glare of heresy oh. off the top? Wow. All right. So, Elspeth, you've had your fun. And away she goes. Antonio just shrugs it off, though. And is Antonio going to play Obzon Charm to draw some cards here? It certainly looks like he's doing that. Oh, no, just fleece maining. Fleece maining, okay. And Elspeth, and let's see what look look at Lars's picture. Is he going to react to this? <laughs> oh. Yes, yes, he does. You saw those eyebrows go up. Like, geez, the third one, really? What can, Lars, what can Lars draw? What in the world can Lars draw? Well, windswept teeth is not what he wants to see here. That's for sure. <laughs> Meanwhile. I don't know if you've noticed this, Kenji. <laughs> Look how many tokens he has. Uh, I'm, He's you know, got 18 going to 21 tokens here. He just reminds me of Splinter Twin. That's all. Oh, right. This is just a little bit yeah, easier. Just, yeah. F fewer clicks, exactly, right? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so I guess Lars is looking to draw another one of his Den Protectors. He has an Elspeth of his own, but it's a little bit too late for that. Uh, Mastery would be fine for the life gain. And hilariously, it looks like Antonio is ready to rumble here. He's just got so many more creatures that he can just crunch in Throw with them a away ton of happily. Them. Yeah. Look at that. 17 of them attacking. You, know, you, may, you may kill six of them. This is going to get him in for 10. Excuse me, for 11. <laughs> and, uh, ouch. Crunch. Down to eight. Casually still have six creatures back, two of them two monstrous fleece mains. And poor Lars Dom can only put his head in his hand there as he draws a forest. It's a beautiful forest, John Avon, but that's going to do it. Antonio Del Moral Leon wins his match, probably keeping his top four uh, hopes alive here. Be pretty insane if he won the Pro Tour and the Magic Online yeah. Championship <laughs> all within just a few short months of each other. But that is going to do it for that round and you see still handshakes. You don't normally get to do that on Magic Online? Not a, not a Magic Online. The closest you can get is the uh, is the GG's. The P, the PJ and, Seltz. Uh, yeah, but but here, you know, they're sitting right across from each other and they can reach out yes, and do a handshake. Exactly. So, a big win there for Antonio as the, uh, Just the, the standings are... Elspeth. Yeah, off of Elspeth. And I mean, it took three. It did? I mean... Uh, 
Let's see, Lars was getting so much value off his creatures, but it just couldn't keep up with Elspeth's plus, 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 plus. Yeah, you know, you'd think that Lars would have a decent matchup against Elspeth as well. He's playing Dragonlord Ojutai, which is pretty nice against Elspeth. Generally, I mean, we did see the Elspeth kill Dragonlord Ojutai, mm -hmm. but that usually means the shields are down yes. and your other creatures can get in. And then Den Protector great against Elspeth. I mean, that's one of the cards that you do not want to see if you're trying to play an Elspeth deck because Den Protector, even when it's not flip face up, but especially when it is, can just run right past the tokens and get in there and attack Elspeth and get loyalty down to, to zero. But in this case, it just certainly wasn't enough. Really monstrous Fleece Mane Lion That's just holding a shield up and saying, you shall not pass for turn after, turn after turn after turn after turn and keeping those... Uh, those den protectors yep. in bed. All right. Well, that was fun. That was exciting. But BDM's in the red zone with even more action for us. BDM, what do you got? All right, guys. So one of the weird things we do here is we get fed stuff on Skype. We have a Google Sheet where everything's stored. And what will happen is Nate Price is relaying some matches out from the floor. If there's a really good game, he will just put it. I mean, a really good game. He'll put it in blue. And he won't tell me who won. We have one of those games queued up. Let's see who it is. It's Daryl Ayers and Marius Schwartz. Let's go to the action. So there's a Warden of the First Tree from Ayers. And uh, it's getting in for three on turn two. Looks like it's going to get in for three on yeah. turn three also. Yeah, it's going to keep coming. Chugga lugga. There's wow. Urborg, Tomb of Yagmoth. Marius is down to 13. Yeah, he basically played a Fleece main turn, too. Yeah. Plays Ashiok Nightmare Weaver. And it gets Heroes Downfalled. Uh, Urborg, Urborg Tomb of Yagmoth doing the things that it does. And there's a uh, Sandstep Citadel. And an. Obzon Charm. All right. So, Marius Schwartz is down to seven here. He goes to six, sacrificing his... Goes to five, sacrificing two polluted deltas. Cast dig through time, and now it's his turn five. So he's gotten to look through the top of his deck. He's gone eight cards deep since that last turn, but he passes with five mana untapped. Okay, so start leveling up. We got now life link on our warden of the first tree. It comes in. And Foul Tongue Invocation. And he revealed a dragon. He revealed Dragon Lord Ojitai. So, Gains for Life goes back up to nine. What is Daryl doing over there? He's got five cards in hand. Yeah, he's, he's got a full grip. He's Plays an Obzon Charm, too. goes up to six cards. He didn't main phase it, though. There's Temple of Silence. Both of these players just kind of playing draw go here, staring at each other. Six but cards there's in There's Dragon Lord Ojitai. For Marius Schwartz. you got to assume the Esper Dragons list is favored in this kind uh, of game. Oh, totally. So Thought Seize takes a Silimgur Scorn. And Daryl Ayers is down to 10. Plays a Siege Rhino. 13 serves 7. Self-inflicted oh. wound. <laughs> Drops Marius to 5 and he loses his Dragonlord Ojutai. That's a sweet card. I have not seen a lot of that yet. I wonder why he didn't counter the uh, Thought Seize then. <laughs> so... Here comes Tassiger, the Golden Fang. And so that's set up to bounce off of Siege Rhinos. 
and maybe start uh, getting some cards back. But here comes Siege Rhino. Block. Set up the bounce. Hero's downfall on Tassiger. He's going to activate. No, Aether oh. Spouts. <laughs> Aether Spouts Siege Rhino back to the top or bottom of your deck. I have a guess. <laughs> and then Hero's Downfall is going to take down the Tassiger. Yeah, bouncing Siege Rhino is not amazing, that even is if it not is on great. top of library. Especially if you had five life. All right, Aye. and another Siege Rhino. And Rakshasa Death Dealer. So what does Marius' deck have for him now? Dig through time. He's a two, though. The game is over. That's it. He can't find anything. Daryl Ayers just obs on charms his way to victory there. So he and he goes to uh, six and six. So really hoping for someone to start dragging some people at the top down to his level. Uh, but interesting game there. So thanks, Nate Price, for the heads up. Sending it back to the booth. Yeah, that was good stuff. Um, this just in. Siege Rhino. Still, still a good, good card? Yeah, still uh, good. And also still travels in packs, by the way. Yeah, always. There's always one following the next one. In this case, there was a third one as well. Now, <laughs> right. Is it a herd or a pack? It's a crash. It's a cra oh, crash. Oh, yeah, crash It's rhinos. actually crash oh, yes. Yes. I knew that, actually. All right, let's send it down, though, to the tournament floor where we have an interview lined up with Hall of Famer Ole Rade. Hey, everyone. I'm Eric Froelich at the Magic Online Championships. And I'm here with Ole Rade, who is a Pro Tour champion, a Hall of Famer, and just won again this round to improve to 7-5. and five. And you've kind of just been absolutely crushing this tournament every time you're not in the feature match area. Is it just the pressure of the lights? You just can't handle that? Yeah, I was actually joking about that earlier. I haven't won a feature match yet, but I guess it's the pressure of being too old to handle. Yeah, you know, it, it's catching up to me, too. It, it's definitely rough. Uh, tell me about your standard deck. Uh, it's uh, a green <laughs> devotion deck with a red splash uh, that people might have seen in the standard Super League uh, last week that Paul Chion played. I've never heard of Paul Chion. Can you tell me a little bit about him? <laughs> He's your friend, right? <laughs> There'd be no way of knowing. <laughs> so what, what led you to choose this deck for this tournament? It matchups you really like? Uh, all jokes aside, I mean, I, th I think it's a good, really good deck for the, the metagame right now. Like, we didn't expect a lot of people to be on Esper. Mm -hmm. More of a, like, a green mid-range meta or an absent aggro and absent control. And then you sort of want to be the bigger green deck. Oh. Yeah, exactly. The, the deck definitely struggles against the Esper Dragons deck, but being able to go over the top of all the mid-range decks, that's that's what you expected from this field? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, And it's pretty good against like, Mono Red, too. Like, yeah, being able to go bigger than them, Corsair of Grufix, and Devotion. Like, no deck has a good matchup against Mono Red if they draw well, but I mean, it's, it's, it's proactive enough to have a good chance, I think. Yeah, so two rounds to go. You're kind of creeping up towards the top of the standings uh you know I, I know the other competitors not too happy to see a, a hall of famer just tracking them down and a couple rounds to go to the top four i wish you good luck hey guys welcome back to the booth so we've got a couple of matches outstanding here and it looks like we might be able to actually jump down to one of these in a moment here uh we'll keep an eye on that right now though but in the meantime we are working our way down towards the home stretch. The home stretch here, right? And this is, of course, at this tournament, we cut to a top four, not a top eight like you might be used to from like a Grand Prix or a Pro Tour. It's a smaller field. There's only 16 players to start, so only the top four are going to make it to play on Sunday, and they're playing for big bucks. $25,000 yes, for first, $17,000 for second, but it's so much more than that to win this event. I mean, there's a prestige involved with it. This is a tough field, and, uh, you know, it, it's really hard to get here in the first place, so if you can manage to take it down, it's great. You also get gold. World Championships. You get an invite to the World Championships. And you get to set a standard on Magic Online, okay. which is kind of cool, too. Fair enough. All right, so I've got a match queued up right now. Um, Aleska Tellerov versus Jasper de Young. Why don't we uh, take a look at that? Uh, actually, it'll take one second for us to get down there, but they are still underway. I can see them here. And uh, we're going to get that match queued up for you in just a moment so that we can watch it. And i got to tell you, the board state looks a little complicated, but there it is. Forty. Oh. This looks like it's a little behind where we're at yeah. here. Forty-five to twenty-four is what it says. Forty-five to 
Yeah, maybe. If we can jump to my screen, I don't know if that's possible. If it's not, we can try to set it up in the red zone screen. Uh, my, mine does have it on, though. I, I'm showing uh, Jasper Young at two life with the Master of the Unseen in play and a bunch of creatures on the battlefield, in fact, flipping up a 10 protector to gain a bunch of life versus Aleska Telerov, who's at 20 and has a Dragon Lord Atarka on the battlefield as well. All right, so... Looks like we're going to jump back to uh, to Kenji and I for a minute, and hopefully we can get that set up for you, though. It might not last that much game. longer here, too. Um, well, it looks this, to be. I think, is over. Yeah, I just saw Aleska Tellerov win, though. I don't know if that was actually the match. So if there is still a match outstanding, we're going to try to bring it for you. But for now, we're going to hang out in the booth for a little bit here. And uh, I've got the, the deck list here. Was there anything that really stood out to you, Kenji, from these lists? That Genesis Hydra. This one right here? So th this is a deck that you like? Definitely, yeah. Anything, anything with an X spell is gonna generally tickle my fancy. Yeah. So this is like, a, this is a green Nykthos deck, basically. You know, a, a devotion deck trying to make a ton of mana. Now we see, yeah, and the four Den protectors. Okay, guys. As usual just so you know, Jasper and Aless Alexa Tellerov are going to game three. It looks like here. Yeah, yeah. I'm watching it on my on my screen here. Although they haven't quite. It looks like they're still sideboarding. This is a big one, too. It's I mean, Alexa's matchup. near the top, right? Mm -hmm. Of our standing, so... Yeah, if Alexa takes down Jasper here, he's he's looking really, uh, really good. He won his first round, sitting at 7-5 yeah, and five or 7-4. Yeah, 7-4 coming into this round. Yeah, he was 7-4 and four coming in. It looks like the match is up now. Again, uh, we, we can jump to to my screen, or if, if Brian has it up, maybe we could go there. We'll, we'll try to get that sorted, so... Hopefully we'll get a chance to bring you some more... Now, unlike a lot of the other decks round? we've seen, Jasper's just running a lot of four ofs. That is a lot of four ofs. That is a lot of four ofs. And his opponent, who are we looking at? Alexa. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's on our number one of, and two, basically, yeah, on going kind of at it. some Jund list. He is. He's playing Jund. We had him in uh, the feature match area a little bit earlier today. And this list is kind of cool. Why don't you go over some of the highlights of that list that you have there? All right. Again, the four Den Protectors, four Death Mist Raptors, just such light, nice little synergy together. Uh, he is running a Whip of Erebos. Yeah, he's got like a Whip. That one. He's got a little bit of late game action with the Whip there. He's also got a Xenagos, the Reveler. Jund, not a color combination that we've seen a whole lot of lately, but there's certainly enough powerful cards there. And, uh, yeah, why don't we jump down to the Red Zone replays. We won't have hands here for this. But we can still see it, and uh, let's see what happens here. This, I believe, is game three of this, this is match. important game three. Players look like they're both a little low on clock as well. And in a, gr in a potentially grindy matchup, which these can certainly be, the clock can matter a lot. So we're going to see the pace quicken a bit, I would, I would imagine. I was watching one of Alexa's earlier matches, and uh, he was able to cast Xenagos, produce a bunch of mana, play another Xenagos, <laughs> get a m bunch of mana. No way! Yeah, and then just go off and dump his hand. <laughs> pretty nice. Just chain them together? Yeah. That's great. All right, and it looks like right now Jasper is on the beatdown plan here. He's got two creatures crunching in, and now a third out of the battlefield. Make that a fourth. Alexa finds himself... A little behind. Does he have an answer here? Maybe a sweeper? His deck he goes does! Oh, from the sideboard. Crux ah, of fate. Yes. But as we know, those Death Mist Raptors have the ability to come back very easily. And right now, there are two in Jasper's uh, graveyard right now. So if that Whisper would manifest it a creature. Uh, we're. All right, BDM, we, we make sure we stay on that one because we're watching your screen. And uh, it looks like Whisperwood Elemental has flipped up a Manifest and is only one away. Oh, but it gets killed almost immediately here. That was a key play there. Murderous cut to take down Whisperwood Elemental before it could get out of control. Now we have to make, make a note of what's in Alexa's graveyard. Remember, he is running that whip. Indeed, he's got the one of whip, and right now his graveyard has Dragonlord Atarka speaking and Death of. Protector. And speaking of Dragonlord Atarka, you didn't really want that Corsair of Crew fix, did you? Now he's running a full three Dragonlord Atarkas in his deck. Speaking of three, that's how many turns Jasper de Young has to stay alive under the immense pressure of Dragonlord Atarka. And Jasper currently on the top it? deck with only two cards in hand. 
He finds Master Ooh. of the Unseen. Remember, if he gets one thing flipped up, he'll get both Death Mist Raptors back. The question is, is it too late? You know, with the Nykthos, if he gets those Death Mist Raptors online, he, he has the potential to not only manifest a ton off the Mastery, but gain a bunch of light af uh, life after that. I wonder if he can race what he's got up against him here, though. This is so much it's heat gonna right now. It's going to be close, now. but uh, Alexa still 14. has four cards in hand. Wow. Death Den Protector doing serious work here. As usual. Yes, we're deciding on blocks. I wonder if he wants to lose his Sylvan carry added. Hero's downfall to take down the manifest. And it was Apollo Kronos. Whoa! Alexa really putting the heat down now. This is not quite lethal. Now he made the really smart play of Actually, waiting. Actually, it is lethal, I should say, so it's a it's a must chump. He needs to hit a, man, uh, a creature here. If he hits a creature, he can gain some life and maybe block on the ground, but he uh, needs to get above eight. The only removal he has in his deck, two main deck Dramoka's commands. From the sideboard, we see, oh, there is an Elspeth that could potentially deal with the, uh, the Dragon Lord Atarka. Three Valorous Stance as well. Oh, Valorous Stance yeah. is what he wants to see here, for sure. There's another Den Protector face down, I'm pretty sure. A big pause here. Remember, he can activate Master of the Unseen here. But he needs to gain a lot more life than he's going to be able to gain here, I think. Even if even if he gets back, back both Raptors, it's still only four yeah. creatures. Jasper doesn't have as much to lose here as Alexa has to has to gain. Now it's he, Genesis Hydra for one. Wow. No, 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 no. It was Corsair that was the uh, manifested excuse me. card. So that's what we're looking at here. That I thought that was the stack. It's actually the top of his library. Yes. So <laughs> in comes the two Death Mist Raptors. Gains three. Ding. Goes up to six. Oh, in response, Mastery again gained four. Okay. <laughs> There's a windswept teeth. That puts him to seven. Or, I mean, that puts him to eight, which is exactly dead. Unless that manifest is like an elf. It, it, it can cost three or less. Okay. Right? If he, if he hit a creature, yeah, most yeah. of his creatures oh, no, he has, hit. He's three mana floating. He has three mana floating. He does? He can, he can flip up almost every Oh, I have card. it behind the little thing. Oh, is he going to get out of this? For a turn, maybe. <laughs> This is Look, I don't know if he needs much more than a turn here. Like, he, if he gets if he gets to untap with this board state, that's two, four, six, eight mana that he can generate six from the Nick. Oh those. God, he's at twelve! Wow. And he's drawing another mastery, so any life gain is going to be doubled. He just attacked, yes. <laughs> and he has three Death Miss Raptors <laughs> to block the two Den Protectors and the other Death Miss Raptor <laughs> on the ground. And he's at 12, so we can take the full brunt of a hit from Dragon Lord Atarka. Even can take a hit from that Anna Den Protector. And if he gets to untap, his Nykthos is going to generate six, plus all that other mana he already has. So there is, I see, the crux in Alexa's graveyard. And if he does have that Den Protector, he could destroy all non-dragons. Okay, that would certainly set back Jasper in that, a huge that, way. That would be excellent, because that way it would be, uh, Jasper would be forced to hit a, uh, a creature off the Manifest. Totally. Because he'd be gone, going down to four life and an empty board except for the mastery, right? Yeah, and we know that he's drawing a mastery next turn. Uh, you can see the top card of his library is kind of in the middle of your screen there, but he's going to be able to... Uh, he's going to draw that, which is, of course, not what he wants to see here, though the second mastery does double the life gain. And so a, if he can hit that creature, he might be able to get out of it. Because the triple death missed. Yes! Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is insane. Also, by the way, both clocks are below five minutes now, with Jasper being below four minutes. And this could matter in a huge way for him because he's almost a minute behind on clock. Alexa, you do not want to fuss around here. He needs to make sure that he plays crisply and doesn't let the clock become a factor against him. He needs this win. I mean, look, he's near the top of the standings. He might be able to get in either way, but he would love to pick up a win Absolutely. off of Jasper and really close that gap. So he didn't flip his morph end of turn. What do we have here? Let's see what we got. It. He's going to flip it now. Now, we knew that was a Den Protector already. That's right. What is he targeting? 
I'm going to find out for you. Hero's Downfall. Hero's Downfall. Killing one of the Death Mist Raptors. Does that set up lethal he for him? He must have multiple removal spells. He does. Wow. He has two removal spells. And that's going to do it. <laughs> Alexa Teleroff wins the match. He defeats Jasper de Jong and might have gotten himself his spot in the top four with that victory. We're not quite sure. Again, the math gets really weird with these. We're used to seeing the normal Swiss setup where we can really get pretty granular about figuring out exactly where things go because you can predict who people are going to play next. But here it gets a little bit different. Um, but still, he's near the top of the Eight standings. Four is great. Yeah, put himself in a good spot. All right, we're going to take a quick commercial break, but when we come back, we're going to have a few more rounds of standard here from the Magic Online Channel.